Show podcast. The show about coins and coin collecting. And not just any show. This is the number one coin collecting podcast. Going 10 years strong. Here's Matt Dinger and Mike Nottleman on the Coin Show podcast. This is episode 201 of the Coin Show podcast. Wow. I'm Mike. And I'm Matt. And on this episode of the Coin Show podcast, we are going to discuss your coolest things. I'm so looking forward uh, to that. As well as interact as much as we can with the people that have showed up in our chat tonight. But first, as always, the news. All right, buddy. This I know you've got one. Who is it? Bring it, bring it, bring it. So this episode of the Coin Show podcast is brought to you by socks. Think of what your shoes would smell like if you didn't have socks. <laughs> I like that one. So um, I actually was talking to him about a uh, about turning socks into a Spanish lesson. Oh, really? I can teach you how to speak Spanish. Oh, yeah? And all the word socks. S O C K S. You just said that's what it is in Spanish. A S O C K S is that's what it is in Spanish. That's what it is. It's Spanish. Wow. Wow. Not yeah. only do we talk about coins, we give free Spanish lessons on this show. I love it. it is, as long as it stays at that level, we're good. <laughs> <laughs> Let's check out the news. So uh, this is actually, this is like breaking news. I saw this and CDC has temporarily stopped accepting submissions. Yeah. I mean, this is just a trickle down from the market being absolutely crazy pants right now. And this is just a by byproduct of that. They're getting so many coins that they just can't keep up and they have to kind of tap the brakes. That, well, look, and it, this is just for their regular tier. Their stuff they have stopped accepting it, submissions. Right. Apparently, the service is being inundated with business, and the current backlog is to quote their founder John Albanese, unacceptable and not consistent with our mission. So, to his credit, you know he had several choices. He could lower the level of service provided to the people who make submissions. Yeah. You know, he, he could take longer. And could expand operations. Um, he could, but you know, I mean, that might dilute the product. Sure. He could charge more for the service to pay the overtime involved. He could place certain services on hold, which is kind of what he's done at the very bottom level. Yes, In my opinion, that was the lowest impact on both brand and marketplace. Uh, yeah, I think so too, because you know, and and actually, they're they're because like one of the. The big grading company for cards, PSA, did the kind of the exact same thing. They were just getting absolutely slammed with submissions that they just had to stop the service. They couldn't do it. And they did it for quite a long time. Hopefully here, I think they're planning on doing it for about a month or so, uh, which will allow them to catch up, allow them to get, you know, get the products that are waiting out uh, and get themselves in a position to offer the the good quick service that they've always offered which because they do they always their turnaround is usually very fast uh so yeah. and like i said to their credit you know they looked at what they could do and i think they went to something that was more minimal minimal impact right and and that was good now you know you said they hope to get it back actually a spokesman for the company says they hope to restore service levels by april 1st there you go so march 1st to april 1st they're going to take right. a break catch up and then come back hot and heavy, which I hope they do. Absolutely. We shall discover together. Two Florida men have been convicted of running a precious metals fraud ring and may have been ordered to, or, and have been ordered to pay over $1.6 million. Florida man, huh? Two Florida men. Oh boy. So the men were running a precious metals based Ponzi scheme, basically misappropriating funds, speculating on their own behalf and siphoning money to cover their own personal expenses. Why does this keep happening? Well, cuz look, there's there's a million ways to 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 chip away at people with money. 
That's, I mean, they're just moving the the they're just moving the lines a little bit, and that's all they're doing. Yeah. I mean, but you know, this is not the first one of these we've reported on. This is obviously not the first one of these that I have seen. There's been God, probably a, a, a half a dozen to ten that I think we've talked about over the years. So, I I just man, I I just can't see yeah. how this keeps happening. Well, let me ask you this. Do you really think that there's enough punishment for it? Well, because no. This, I mean, that, you know, I, I set this whole thing aside and I said, look, you know, the headline is that the men are ordered to pay $1.6 for the precious metals fraud. Right. Doesn't mention jail time. Right. Nothing. Yeah. Right? Yeah. And I mean, if it's two years in federal prison and the fines... I don't think that's enough. And I it really even worse than that is it's like, you know, look, these guys who are running a precious metal Ponzi scheme. They don't have money. They can't pay this money. Right. Which yeah. means the people aren't going to get their money back. And the worst part which- is it makes it harder for, for guys that are legitimate. It makes it harder for legitimate dealers because stuff like this happens enough. But, you know, legislation is going to get passed to make it harder to do this which may inadvertently make it harder for us to do certain parts of our business. Even though we're perfectly legit, you know, we do things the right way. Um, the legislation that gets passed to stop this kind of stuff, because it keeps happening, obviously, uh, can make it more difficult for, you know, the average guy to do business. Especially. You have got to send these people to jail. Yes. Yes. That's yes, please. Too. you got to send them to jail and you got to lock them up and, and, you know, it's not just a matter of, well, they're not allowed to trade anymore. This, who cares? You know, and then, um, I, I don't know. It, in the article, yeah. it said, the CFTC cautions that orders requiring repayments of funds to victims may not result in the recovery of any money lost because the wrongdoers may not have sufficient funds or assets. Yeah, they spend it all on themselves. Right. The CFTC will continue to fight vigorously for the protection of customers and to ensure the wrongdoers are held accountable. How? Yeah, please tell me how. I want to know. Yeah, I, I love the fact that you're going to ensure that they're held accountable. In what way are you going to do that? Yeah, maybe we can maybe we can fire these people off an email and find out because I would really love to know the answer to that question. Huh. I mean, I was looking through that story for how much jail time they got. Yeah. Couldn't find it. Probably because they got probation or something along those lines. So Ridiculous. wouldn't you just start up another one? Well, I mean, I'm sure the second time around you get some jail time out of the deal, but man, I am. Uh, In the meantime, you're gonna be living pretty good. Yeah, I don't know. I I hate it. I hate this stuff. I just I don't like it. Even when we talk about it, it just makes me mad. I, I don't like to be angry. I like to be positive on the show, and uh, this makes me so angry. Let me make you laugh then. Okay. Okay. So I saw this headline from the next story and I immediately thought, Matt, Mike, Justin, and Corey? I didn't even put out a press release. <laughs> the big four rare coins. That's right. So seriously, the the Pogue 1804 dollar, yeah. which is a class one, it's proof 68 PCGS. The Eliasburg 1894S Barber Dime. Yeah. Which is PCGS per 65 plus and the Eliasburg 13 Liberty nickel and uh, a 43 bronze Lincoln cent in PCGS AU 58. So all of those coins are selling at the central state show that we are going to be yeah. at. They are all going to be on display at the central state show as will we. Ooh, baby. My question is, will you? You should go. If you have the opportunity, go. because, you know, look, this is, this, this is going to be really cool. And these coins are all going to be there for you to see, for you to look at. Um, you don't get the opportunity to see really super rare coins like this very often. And when the opportunity comes, you should last year at the ANA, they had the 33 double Eagle. Wow. Oh, th- so they're not selling their displayed. Okay, good, good, good. That makes that makes more sense. I was going to say, man, that's a heck of an auction for the Central yeah, State Show. But yeah. Okay. yeah, that would be a heck of an auction. Yeah. So, uh, you know, Matt, when I first started doing this show, I would dream about newscasts like this one where I could just talk about this super rare coin is here and that super rare coin is going to be here. Yeah. So you're still living your dreams. Yeah. <laughs> 
I like it. I told you you'd like these coins. I do. I love these coins. I can't. I said, we're, I'm going to look at them several times. I said to Matt before the show that this was going to be like my dream newscast. Yeah. It's so far so good. Yeah. So let's keep dreaming. So a super rare 1884 trade dollar is currently up for bid at great, uh, great collections. Ooh, this is a tough coin. The coin is one of only 10 struck. Yes. And it is pedigreed to the Norweb collection as well as King Farouk. Queen. <clears throat> Whoa. Yeah. Um, PCGS graded it proof 63 <laughs> and uh, bidding closes tomorrow night. Are you saying I should buy that for you? Sure. If you want to buy that for me, I'd be eternally grateful. What would you do with a coin like that? Um, I'd look at it for a while. <laughs> <laughs> then I'd sell it. Yeah, all right. That's what happens. That's why all these coins keep cycling around is because. I've been broken. I don't have the collector gene anymore. It sucks. Yeah, I know. I didn't do it. It wasn't my fault. Okay. The finest known 1866 proof $3 gold piece will be offered in Stax Bowers April 22 showcase collection. So that is selling at Central States, right? April 22? Um, It's going to be Stax Bowers April 22 showcase collection. I don't know if that's going to be at uh, Central States. There she is. Okay. Yeah, so uh, I think this is Central States, right? I think we're going to be, you know, able to go look at this coin if we want. That's true. It's going to be in Baltimore. Uh, Womp, womp. Womp, womp. April's a busy month then. Central States and Baltimore, back to back. Yeah, buddy. But yeah, I mean, only 30 of this coin were struck. Man, the rarities are coming out. 25 of them were struck January 15th. And five of them were struck on June 8th. I like how they have those dates down. Like, oh, well, on this day we made. So I want a June vintage. Yes, I, I want the June the June vintage, please. The April's a little too spicy for me. It's got the repolished dyes or something. There's got to be a way you can tell. <sighs> Who knows? Yeah, I mean, that's a, a, a decent amount of time to pass for, you know, <laughs> For those for the first group and the second group, there's probably a way, though I'm not sure what that would be. Great Collections has sold a PCGS Proof 70 Deep Cam 1995 W Silver American Eagle, and the results are actually kind of interesting in my book. So the bidding was really strong. Yeah. As 15 bidders competed to win, right? But the final hammer was only 17,000. I sold one of these not too long ago. Um, I sold one of these exact coins the last time we were in Chicago. I mean, I've seen people asking over 25 for these. Yep. And I've seen them sell for over 20. Well, I mean, the, so the fact that this one went at hammer for 17. One of the very first ones of these that sold in a PCGS 70 holder brought almost $90,000. So it looks like 70s are becoming more more available, and they're grading more of them. Uh, I made one. And I think the pop is just growing. Yeah. I I sent, I know guys that send in 10 of these coins and don't get a single 70, and we just happened to make one with one coin. So that was that was a, a good luck on my part. But, um, yeah. I will tell you that even, you know, now, what is it, 26 years later? Yeah. You can still find original sets that have never been touched, that have never, you know, they've been sitting in private collections. Yeah, I get probably two or three a year that come in the office um, from people's I think collections. The time for that, right? Because the people at bottom are about the right age to have been either, you know, meeting their decline or or wow. selling off their stuff. Did you just say they're meeting their decline? Well, it's better than saying buying the farm. I mean. <laughs> okay, that's true. So, so the Coin Week article goes on to predict that the 95W may be falling out of favor and that the coin to watch as a usurper is the V75 Silver American Eagle Proof from 2020. That would be kind of cool. I've got two or three of those right I now. We could not disagree more, though. I, mean, I just could. Yeah, well, I, I, maybe they're trying to push that coin and run it up. Who knows? Yeah, because, I mean, the value of the 95W is different than most coins in the way it's derived. 
and it's got a minage of less than 31,000 coins where the V75 was what 200 200,000? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I mean it yeah. I mean 1,000 coins and a distribution that was not favorable to silver coin collectors. Uh is very I true. Think it's going to cement its place in silver American Eagle history. That's just me. Yeah. Yeah, I could see that. Okay, so the numismatic alarm clock is ringing. My dream newscast is over unless we hit this news alarm. Okay. So one last cool coin story. <laughs> Heritage Auctions has sold not one but two 1879 flowing hair Stellas Stella. in their Long Beach signature auction. You ever? I remember watching that episode of Seinfeld where she yells, Stella. Every time we talk about these coins, I feel like that it just pops into my head. Sorry, well, you I, know where that's from, right? Uh, it's i do but i can't remember it right now streetcar named desire that's right yes 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 so that's that's what all the okay but yes yeah, so every time she yells it i always I, that's the one i think of sure so anyways sorry so sorry. Auction, uh has not sold one but two 1879 flowing hair stellas in their long beach signature auction one sold for one eighty four five. Okay, and the other for one seventy four. Yeah, I mean these coins are basically a, a decent house, <laughs> you know. Like that's uh, that's what these coins are uh, these days. I I've had a couple in my hands. I've never actually owned one. I would like to own one, uh, but you can buy a lot of stuff with a one hundred and seventy k plus. Yes, and it's really not that big a coin either. It's it's really not that large no no it's like the size of a, of a quarter or so i mean thereabouts yeah somewhere in there so also sold in this auction were a 1932 20 dollars saint okay an 1884 s morgan in uh ms64 plus tough coin an 1886 o in ms65 also so a very between tough coin. three of those cleared over $150,000 between Man, three. This just shows you how strong this market is right now. It's insane. I love it. It's not always going to be this way, but it is right now. So got to make hay while the sun shines. So there was also an 1870cc $10 gold. An 83 Morgan in 68. Okay. And a modern mint coin that even you will drill over. Oh, I saw this coin. <laughs> 2001 D Lincoln sent muled with a Roosevelt dime reverse PCGS certified as MS 65 red. Yeah. That's a neat so piece. Don't go all the way down to it. Cause any guess what it sold for Matt? Um, I've already looked Mike. I'm not going to lie. It's right okay. here on the screen. $78,000, which is insanity. You know, I mean, that's a, that's a super cool coin. It shouldn't have happened. Somebody was messing around at the mint and making making things for fun funsies and that's yeah, what they definitely done on purpose yes definitely done on purpose and um super rare coin that it got out but it and speaking of cool coins oh wow i can't talk for the sake of cool coins uh oh give me a sec yep we'll take a take a little pause here i can edit this part out which is wonderful Mike is hacking his lungs out right now, everyone. Pause, no, pause. I, I'm not hacking. I just, my, my voice is going. Uh-oh. Take a drink. Take a drink of water. M massage the vocal cords there, friend. And we'll just jump right back into it. Maybe. This is kind of like the equivalent of getting a flat tire. I think it is. It's the first time I've ever had this problem. Yeah. I mean, yeah. My kids would be delighted. <laughs> Is uh yeah, it's like you know I get, having your voice go out right in the middle of a show is the equivalent to like having a flat tire in a race car, you know. It's, well, and what's worse is I have a cough drop in my mouth oh. at, at the current moment, and Wait. it didn't help. Nope. Well, I can I can just keep going if you like. I've got the so, news story. You know, cool coins for the sake of cool coins. Uh, Q. David Bowers writes an article in Coin Week extolling the virtues of the 1817 large cent with 15 stars. 15 star large cent. These are cool. I do like these. 
Me personally, I like the coins that have more than 13 stars as they were done for, you know, a really short period of time. And then they show that we were just kind of going day to day, figuring it out as best we could as a government. Yeah. Just kind of adding states all willy nilly, you know, states and stars, states and stars, slapping them on the coins. Oh, there's right. another one. Stars and, and just stars. And yep. <laughs> And then some more stars, and then we got too many stars, and they couldn't put them on there, so they had to switch something else. That's so lastly on, lastly on cool coins, many people would love to own a really, really nice slabbed AU58 1916 Standing Liberty Quarter, wouldn't, wouldn't you agree? I've owned a couple, and yes. So let's rev up the cool factor, as this particular coin belonged to Herman McNeil. Ooh. And was the very first one struck. Ooh, I like how it, it circulated a little. Yeah, so anyways, this coin surfaced at Fun in January and subsequently went to PCGS where it was authenticated, graded, and entombed with a label that states McNeil specimen. That's cool. Like I said, I... I, I... You know, being that it was a, a one of the first pieces struck, I like how it circulated just a little bit. Just kind of bounced around in a pocket for a while. <laughs> I like that. Well, I mean, think about it. It was the first one off the die. So, I mean, this thing was probably a cameo. Well, it's not a proof. It's a mint state coin. So, it, it was probably. I that, but it you know how the dies are. Yeah, yeah, I have never seen a proof like standing Liberty Quarter ever in the history of ever. So I'm not sure those coins come proof like even the first one. Yeah. Um, you know, they're they're beautiful coins. I like them a lot, but I have never seen a proof like one. They may exist, I've just not seen one. Well, yeah, I mean there was no proof production at all during that time. Right. And they were using that really that orange peel finish that was like the heyday of it. So it just didn't yeah. Whoa, oh, that, that, uh, that orange peel finish that they had just, that was the heyday of it. And you just don't see proof like coins on that finish ever. I've never seen one like the matte proof Lincoln's same thing. You know, they made them, but there's, they're not proof like at all. Right. And, and even allegedly they're you know, they're supposed to be some that they made into 17 and. So that was still the, the, the thing at the mint right. at that time. Right. So, yeah, I, it, very interesting coin, though. I like it. I, I really like that coin. Okay, so that was enough of uh, of my coin dreams. And <laughs> on your coin nightmares, the 2022 Purple Heart Hall of Honor coins are now available. I saw this, too. This is cool. This is all the issues of the regular commemorative coins, not the colorized silver dollar, which is not yet available. I want that one. That's the one I want. See, these are going to cause very little stir, but I expect the colorized silver dollar to be another test of the U.S. Mint website. Yeah. They haven't had one of those in a, in a, a month or two or three, so they need to, well, right? You got to check it out. Got to see if they've fixed it this time. We will find out, too. They have yet to. No, they haven't fixed it yet, but they also haven't really made much of an effort. <laughs> That's true. Dear U.S. Mint. Dear, hashtag Dear U.S. Mint. <clears throat> the 2022 American Innovation Dollar Designs have been made public. Oh, boy. Here we go. You ready? Unveiled. Yeah, Rhode Island needs to innovate a new design. Okay? Oh, they used the boat again, didn't they? It's like, come on, Really? Look, it's the smallest state, so I understand. You know, it's it's the Bay State. You don't have a lot going on other than the ocean. But there's got to be something. There's got to be this something, right? Innovation quarter, or this is an innovation dollar. And here's the first, the Vermont quarter, snowboarder. We, I would snowboarder. never had a snowboarder on a coin before, ever. That's awesome. Now, Kentucky is a bit uninspired. Banjo, baby. <laughs> we won't go there. Nope. Many of my wife's relatives live there. Yep. Yep. And you probably live really close. Uh, not um, very far. And Tennessee is just a bad design for a small coin. I, I mean. I, Who's the focus of that coin? The, Without the, looking. The power lines. The of course. Power lines. 
what are they celebrating as an innovation? Outdoor power? Did they invent Well, they it? actually, the, the Tennessee Valley Authority, they are. So that coin yeah. actually does convey. The Valley Authority largely revolves around the dams and things like that. That created electricity, Mike. Correct. Yeah. So why wouldn't you focus on the dams? I... And... But you know what? It did, not knowing, not reading around the outside, the power lines were the first thing that jumped out at me. And then reading that it was the you know the TVA that they were talking about. Okay, that makes sense. Before I read that, it did not. Uninspired. <laughs> okay. Just okay. Kidding. Oh, boy. <sighs> Another fun fact about the American Innovation Dollar Series is the Privy Mark. Privy now, most mark. people are blissfully unaware of the privy marks on these coins. Do you Are you aware? No, not at all. Okay, so the first one, which the first year there was only one coin, it was the George Washington coin. That one didn't have a privy mark. But if you look to the, uh, well, I guess it's the reverse, the Statue of Liberty side, there's a gear on each of them, and it changes with every year. Oh, I did not there's know a, that. There's a privy mark on it every year. This is the fourth one. That shows you how much I don't care about the modern coin. Oh, I know. I, know. It's, it's, I just love making you point that out. Coin Week is reporting that PCGS has discovered a new dye variety for the 1843-0 Liberty Seated Half Dollar. Wow. wow. Now, it's, it's cool to me to see what it takes to create a new dye variety. Yeah, I, it's it's cool for me to see what it takes to get this story to come up on my screen. <laughs> it's not happening. Um, but yeah, that that happens still occasionally. I, I guess I'm going to bring the show back to us because for now, that story's not loading. Yeah, it's all good, doesn't matter. Man, what a what a what a harsh show we're having tonight, buddy. Your voice you know is what? blowing out. My computer. Yeah, the first two hundred smooth sailing. Now it's going to yeah. get bumpy. We're starting over. Oh. So, <laughs> but yeah, no, that happens. That does happen. They do very, very, very occasionally. They do discover a new dye variety that has remained unseen for years and years and years. Uh, I feel like I remember it happening a couple of years ago with maybe uh, a dime, uh, an early dime. But yeah, it, it does happen. They still do it. Well, what I think is really cool about the process is where they try to identify where the earlier and later dye states of this dye would be. And then, if I recall correctly from the article, they're basically looking for a match. And if there's no match that they can find, it has to be a new variety, right? Uh, I think that's how they do it, yes. I, I, I am not very well versed in that. I've done a little bit of that kind of stuff before. Um, but, yeah, that that is how I believe it's done. Sometimes the dyes don't match anything. Yes, that's and right. That's because it's fake. And then our friend Jack Young writes about it. Yes, that's true. Jack has been oh. just knocking these things out lately, and I love to read them. This is another good one, too. Yeah, so this last week he wrote of a an 1854 huge O Liberty Seated Quarter. Huge O. Yeah, huge O. Interesting enough, Jack found a certified struck counterfeit and thinks that he may have the original host coin in his own collection. Yeah, that's the thing with, with Jack's stuff. When he finds these things, he starts reverse. He, he basically goes back and finds, he goes and finds more. And I've helped him do that a couple of times. It is really, really interesting. Mm -hmm. um, and it's really, really strange when you can, uh, because eventually we do stumble onto the host coin. Uh, and almost every one of them, just like this one, started off as a damaged coin that went from a, an auction uh, overseas and then was repaired, copied, and then the original coin sold again. Right. And then the fakes start to pop up too. So, So in this article, he makes the case that this coin was repaired. And then from the repaired coin... They made a mold, and then they cast counterfeits from that. Yep, 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 yep. Now, if you look here, yep. you can. he actually highlights how they repaired the coin. You can see the coin had an X scratched on it on the top right image here, uh, and obviously also had the hole in it. Uh, they took that coin, they filled the hole, and recut the dies, the hand, part of the hat, uh, part of the pole. Uh, 
but they left some of the other marks on the original coin when they fixed it. And now this is right. like try to make it look original to try and make it look real. Right. They, they left that for realism's sake, but they fixed other things and tooled them. Yep. So yeah, it's it's a very it's really interesting the way he just kind of sets it up and he shows you, okay, look, look at the gash here. Yep. It's really scary. Look at the gash here. You know, and then and then you have and he just I don't know. I really love what Jack does. I do too. And it's it's he blows my mind every time we find one of these and and we look at it, it just absolutely blows my mind. The effort that goes into it first of all also the skill at which they are fixing and copying these coins uh it it's really really scary and i'm glad that somebody is documenting it because if nobody was documenting it it would be a major major issue it's already pretty bad but for jack you are going to end up with a whole mess of quote varieties that are just counterfeit coins right and uh, to it. yep, I really applaud what he does. And I know, uh, he is a fan of this show. I am a fan of him. So thank you, Jack. Yeah, Great job. Fans too, Jack. Yep. And finally in the news, baby coins, baby coins, baby coins. Oh boy. So according to the Royal Australian mint website, baby coins celebrates the arrival of your newest bundle of joy with this 2022 uncirculated baby coin set. This uniquely and cutely numismatic set reimagines three of Australia's distinct circulating coins as gorgeous baby toys. Huh? (laughs) Wow. Okay. I mean, I like the dollar. I like the one at the bottom, the $2. Your kid needs a haircut, but yeah, yeah, sure. You know what? He's a baby. (laughs) He's a cartoon, really. Yeah. Kind of looks like he belongs in Rugrats or something. Yeah, you know. Yeah, Rugrats. Wow, you're dated, aren't you? So, and actually, they said that that's an indigenous baby. So, huh? Yeah. So they they basically took their normal coins that you see and they reimagined them with toys on them and for babies. Yeah. So they took the Learbird that's on the ten cent coin. And they made it a, a, as they say, winky wonky marionette puppet. The 50 cent coat of arms has been given a party makeover with a Rue and an emu. Huh, okay. You know, so maybe that's Lemu's family. Yeah. <laughs> We're going to get sued. We're getting sued for that one. Thanks, buddy. So, um, you know, please note that uh, there's a limit of 25 of these per customer. Yeah, if you need them, 25, 25 yeah. only. 25 only. Wow. Set of six coins for $45, uh, I'm assuming, AU. Yeah, Australia. Australia. Yeah, yeah. Huh. Wow. Well, that is that is rather interesting. I've never quite seen such a thing. Those guys are really innovating and, in my opinion, really stretching for ideas. Um, but, yeah. Uh, okay. Good job, Australia. We need new ideas for people to have coins to celebrate their kids, right? How many silver eagles can you sell? Right. That's true. Yeah. I'm not going to stock these. Never, ever, no. and ever would I stock these. But, it, but it's an option that's going to be unique for this year. Okay. So for the people that are born in this year, maybe, you know, 25 years from now, they'll be collectible. And maybe not. (laughs) Maybe not. I don't know. If there's a big error on it, man, it's all over it. Yep. That's me. I'll tell you what. If they become worth money, you'll care. Maybe. It's possible. It's possible. It's possible. I mean, maybe, maybe, you know. I'll take the chances on that one. Wow. Well. That was a heck of a new segment. Not necessarily a marathon, but it was a good one. Well, I mean, look, my dreams went overtime, right? They did. And it was just really nice to talk about, wow, you got, you know, these four big four coins are going to be at Central States along with a couple others. Yeah. Um, yeah. And, uh, you know, the stuff that's being sold in April. I mean, some of those coins are, you know, 10 minutes, 25 minutes, um, just spectacularly rare stuff. And if, if you really have an interest in seeing, you know, certain things that you're never going to see, you have to take the opportunities when they present themselves. Yep. I agree. You got to make hay when the sun shines. Hey. Sure. Wow. So that was the news. And who was the news brought to you by again, Mike? The news was brought to us by Socks. 
Think of what your shoes would smell like if you didn't have socks. You're listening to the Coin Show podcast with Matt Dinger and Mike Nottleman. Well, buddy, you wanna you wanna check in, see if anybody wants to converse about anything tonight? Absolutely. This is always one of my one of my most enjoyable parts of the show is when people just throw questions at us and we can uh, we can talk about whatever, whatever. I know before the show we had a few que- a few comments that were fun, and uh, yeah. When the Coin Show podcast becomes your Coin Show podcast, that's right. And you know what? Tonight it is going to be your Coin Show podcast because after we take a few questions, we are going to do your coolest thing, which we haven't done in a while. I've got been taking a look at the thread. There's some really cool stuff that we get to look at tonight. So I'm excited. Yeah. Let's see. So Taffy was talking about how uh, the turnaround for NGC is about three to four months now. Can you believe that? Yeah. Yeah, but I mean, that that's everybody's just nuts right now. Yeah, that's the market. I mean, it's just it's hotter hotter than the sun right now and, and I don't understand where all the coins came from though. I don't know necessarily think it's coins. It's everything. Because they're doing you know, they're doing cards, they're doing comic books, it's and they only have one mail room and it all comes into one spot. So yeah, I know, but when they expanded their business, didn't they expand their I mean, did they take the 25, and I'm just pulling a number out, did they take the 25 people that work there and, and say, okay, well, 12 of you are going to go over here and 13, didn't they hire new people for the new adventures? I don't know. I, I Obviously, something has changed, it, whether it's volume of coins or whether it's resources being taken from coins to put towards other things, whatever it is slowing down the process it's usually a fair it used to be a fairly quick process not necessarily so fast anymore yeah yeah because it seems to me to be a volume thing because even you know cac is saying you know look we're just getting inundated right well yeah it must be a volume thing it actually is volume it's not uh crack outs it's not you know like silver eagles coming out people need their coins graded i do i've stopped sending anything i have not sent anything in probably six months it's just, yeah the it's only not worth stuff it. that we've sent recently we sent walk through yeah you have to it's not worth yeah. it to send send lower end coins it's just not worth it, it, it no. they're gone for too long you have way too much money tied up in stuff that's just sitting in a mail room for four months or yep. three months or whatever it is you yep. know it's just I, it's not worth it to me uh, let's see here. Let me look at some questions. What coin release are you two looking forward to? Mike, do you have any coin releases? I, mine obviously is the purple heart colorized coin. I'm going to buy one. Um, what do you got, Mike? What are you looking forward to? I'm looking to the end of the year for okay. the proof piece dollar. Oh yeah. I forgot about that. It'll be a first. Yeah. There's never been a proof piece dollar. Yeah. Yeah. No. Do I honestly think it's going to be gobsmacking and be something that is no i think they're gonna mess it up somehow or another man i'm sorry i just really think so dear u.s mint hashtag dear u.s mint mike thinks you're gonna screw it up so i I just think so that's that's my thought um but but i'm still there i'll still buy it yeah you know i'm the guy that bought the enhanced uncirculated proof set yeah yeah (laughs) like one of four uh, let's see here. I've noticed PCGS, Joe Bohannon, by the way, uh, I noticed PCGS seems to be having a hard time keeping up with pricing Morgans, i.e. auctions going way over their prices. Uh, do you think it will level off or will the bubble burst? Um, I assume you're talking about PCGS price guide. Uh, a lot of stuff is going over price guide right now, not just Morgans. Uh, but I think that's just a product of a, the market's really hot and B it's hard to keep up. Um, on a, a website like that because they have a price guide for gosh i can only imagine how many coins they have price guides for so to get to pay somebody to get in there and actually update them uh is probably not in the cards right now especially considering they're busier than they've ever been uh i, I don't think that's probably at the top of their priorities right now um so i'm assuming it's just a, a matter of those two things um, them not really having time to maintain it and the fact that the market's hotter than the sun. 
Yeah, well, that hotter than the sun is going to affect a lot of stuff. We have a question from our unnamed source. Okay. Barry Swan. Um, how do you keep up to date in pricing stock as a dealer in such a hot market? Um, you know, I was I had this conversation the other day, and this might be actually something fun to talk about here because you might be able to, uh, as a collector, get a decent deal on something. Because, you know, we were thinking about this the other day in the office, and my opinion was, just price it like it is now, and we will make our profit. And if it goes up, then good for whoever buys it. I don't have time to go back and reprice things 10 times. I'm going to price it. I'm going to price my profit in it, and then I'm going to put it out. And if it, you know, if the market keeps moving and it gets worth more than what I have it listed at, go for it. You know, buy it. I, I, I'm good for you. It's, uh, it's just it, – that's the only way to do it. You still make your percentage profit that you had, had built into it, and then you don't have to worry about it. I don't know if you guys do it different, but that's how we do it. Well, and I will say that from my experience, it is a little bit different in the fact that, you know, we're always trying to discern what the current price is. Yeah. Always. So, I mean, look, we have a bigger staff, so we have time to do that. We have time to chase that. Um but yeah, it's all about information and it's all about your sources. And, you know, you have to be, look, you can't know the market on everything. Oh, no. So you have to kind of pay attention to the markets of what you specialize in and watch those. Yeah, for sure. Uh, let's see here. You can pay enough attention. Yeah, yeah. Let's see here. Let's see uh, another question. You guys run retail businesses, right? Uh, I run a store. Mike is an employee at a store. Uh, he said, uh, are you seeing a huge amount of activity? What sells really well at the store in this current price surge? What are people looking for? Um, bullion first is, is the right end is the number one answer. Obviously yeah. we are in a really crazy time in the world right now. Um, there's a lot of things going on that are affecting the market. And there's a lot of uncertainty about what the future holds for everyone. Hopefully nothing bad. For Hopefully. the most of the world, uh, but <laughs> in times of uncertainty, bullion is what's hot. Uh, and then second, I would say nice collector stuff, uh, type stuff in the five in the fifty to thousand dollar range has been my bread and butter. Uh, lately, it it has been selling like crazy, both online and in the store. I just can't keep it in stock. I need to buy more all the time. Yeah, I think that this this current european conflict is illustrating just exactly how bullion works in times of the world going you know to absolute pot yes so you know people trying to get out of this war-torn country it, it, you know it's like look the ruble's collapsing um they may not be able to spend their currency it may not be compatible it may not you know tra if they've got gold yep. it's small and they can carry it with them they can wear and it on their. They can wear it on their I fingers go. like a little ring, you know. I mean, yeah. and when they get to wherever they go, it's going to be good, and yeah. people will want it. Yep. So I mean, that's. I think that illustrates it better because you know it's like we get people all the time that you know are stacking silver, which is hey, it's great. But I just look at it from a standpoint of I don't think the people with silver over there right now are in a very good position, versus the people with gold. Yeah. Uh, but but coin coin wise, uh, just nice choice examples, uh, certified coins. That's really just selling like crazy. So, uh, Jay Burns says, I've noticed eighteen thirties and forties, uh, Liberty seated quarters making big gains in the last months and the last three months in the VF area. Uh, yeah, I mean this is going to happen in times like this. A lot of things are going to find new values in this market uh, that maybe have been overdue or overlooked. Uh, for a long time, and it's just simply because now dealers and pr people that price coins for a living, the gray sheet, thank you, by the, the way, to the gray sheet for the sweet shirt, um, you know, those kind of people maybe find it uh, that, you know, find that it's time to stop and take a look at certain things that they have maybe forgotten about for a while, and that might be why the gains have happened, or, uh, you know, 
there's a couple of big guys putting nice collections together that have run up some auction prices. There, there are a lot of different things that go into why gains happen in certain series. And some of it, you know, it, it you don't even think about. Like, you know, like, like I just said, you know, the guys, you might get three or four collectors that are chasing the same thing. And, you know, they all have the means to run up auction numbers higher. And that's going to make, that's going to make prices go up in the price guides and the, in the, you know. And, and this is just my opinion, but I think that in general, seeded series from dime all the way to dollar have been undervalued for a little while. Yeah, I think so. And I think people are starting to realize just the survival rate of them is low. And so many of them were melted, and some of the coins are actually quite rare. Yeah. Uh, J.R. Preston says, which modern air, core, air coin is worth getting to hold on to for the long run? I own a 55 double die and a 42 over one Merc. I really like 55 double dies. Uh, as a as, 2001 D Mule that we talked about. <laughs> yeah. That would be one to own. Yeah, yeah. But I, I really do like 55 double dies because they, they're kind of elusive. They don't really know how many of them are out there. There's a few, there's quite a few, of course, but uh, they don't think there's nearly as many as there are a coin like, say, the 42 over 1 dime or uh, the, you know, the, the 42 over 1 D. Uh, you know, it, it, there's a – I like that 55. I think that 55 double die transcends numismatic, so Ooh. I think it- – it appeals to people that are not coin collectors. Yeah. And, and you know, the people have not necessarily as much as like the SVDB, but people know about that coin. Yes. They know about the SVDB, but when they see that 55, they always have the same reaction to it. Yep. 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 Uh, let's see. One more here. Uh, are S mint mark coins in the teens and are the tens and twenties still hot? Uh, what are the predictions of the high, uh, what are the were the predictions of higher values a few years ago realized? Um, Lincolns are always hot. That's that's the that's the coin that just no matter what in any market you can sell. Um, the the teens and twenty obviously the ten these as buffaloes. I'm sorry. Also twenties as mint buffaloes. Yeah. Also hot. Yeah. Um, the the. The 10s, 11s, 12s, 13s, 14s, 15s Lincoln cents are always just e- so easy to sell because everybody needs them. They're scarce coins. Uh, you know, of course, there's an 9s. Uh, 20s's, their pr- quality wasn't the best. So to find a nice example can be challenging. And that's why I like those coins. I don't really know what the predictions were that you're referring to. Um, but I just like everything else right now, they're worth more. Uh, everything's worth more than it was two years ago, uh, three years ago. You know, everything is high, is higher now. So, if you're going to take that though and try and and try and look at it from a from a should I buy should I not standpoint, think about this. Okay, so for the last two years, the values on it have been steadily rising, and why is that? Because basically the pandemic, you know, and it has it has uh, seen a rise in. Um, traditional hobbies and things that people do indoors. Yes. Well, I jump started it. Yeah. The change going forward. I don't know. I don't know. Maybe this is like the new the new life we needed for this hobby. You know, people digging around in their closet when they didn't have anything else to do besides be at home. Uh, and you know, they dug out their old coins and they got interested in them again. Maybe this is like state quarters. Uh, you know that that jump started the hobby. The renaissance and the innocent in the uh, interest in coins. I just don't predict it. Okay. Well, then we differ in opinion, maybe. Okay. It happens occasionally here, people. Once in a while. Not very often. Well, sir, I am jonesing to get back to this segment for their coolest things. I love this I really am. I do, too. So let me just get it pulled up here. There she is. I well, guess so we've got some of the usual suspects tonight. Yeah, it looks like uh, the Slab King, Isaiah Hageman, was first out of the box. I saw him buy this, and I wondered, what the heck is going on? Uh, <laughs> he bought uh, an 1883, an 1882-0 Morgan Silver Tower uh, in the Great Southern Treasury Hoard pedigreed slab. But with this coin came a one-by-one-inch piece 
of the original silver dollar bag that this coin came in. And it is in a slab itself, which is why he likes it. Um, I think well, that's the only cool. reason I won't say allegedly at this point. <laughs> I think <laughs> it's an alleged, alleged fascination with slabs for, for the slab king himself. Yeah. Well, look, I, did he buy this because of what it is and that it's a slab of this? I guarantee it. I don't think that he bought it for the long-term value of the, the slapped cloth. I don't think so. No, he More bought it because it's strange and unusual, and that's what he likes. Yeah, and you look at it 15 years from now when you can't find one. Hey, you see this? Yeah. Yep. I have a whole I have a whole one of those bags over here in my office. So uh, I'm I, I was kind of kind of like, why would they cut that up? Because they're you know the the original bags are worth uh, 500 to a thousand dollars for an original Morgan silver dollar bag. So to cut one up, American bag, yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, they're hard to find. Yeah, yeah. Uh, well, let's see here. Mark Schuer says, I recently inherited this 1960 set encased in acrylic. It includes both P and D mint coins, so it's not really a mint set. I don't know if it's worth busting out or, or even how to do that. Interestingly, there's a crack that hits the dime, which is the only coin that's toned. Uh, these used to be a thing. The banks used to give these out. Sometimes they were paperweights, and they would they would put these coins in acrylic like this. And they're uh, still paperweights. They're still paperweights, and you uh, you do see that every once in a while. I will tell you, it is one thousand percent definitely not worth trying to get them out of there. Uh, it is a nightmare. I've done it. I do not recommend. And I'll just leave it at that. <laughs> Okay, so I've never known anybody that actually got them out. I got it out. I've known people that have given up. I've got it out. It took about a week and about two gallons of acetone and a hammer, but I got and it out. Was the coin racked nope. from the experience? No, no it wasn't. Okay. No, it was an 1883 old Morgan dollar that went on to certify as an MS-66, which is the only reason why I even attempted that process. Probably finish. Yeah. No, it was clean. I got it all off. That's awesome. Yeah. Uh, let's see here. Tyson Dallas says, I recently acquired this beauty, an 1826 cap bust half, hands down the oldest and coolest coin he owns. Perfect. That is what this segment is all about. Oldest, yes. coolest, yours, being That's just a really nice lettered edge bust half in a nice collector grade of fine. Yep. Got some wear, but doesn't look like anybody really, really did much to, uh, to tear it apart, which happened to a lot of those coins. Now, this one, this next one is from Jack Young, and this is one of my favorites of what he does. Yes. So this is a 1796 S85 variety large scent overstruck on a late date petite head large scent. And he says possibly 1843. I love the attributions. So it was recently certified as genuine, but you would need a DeLorean to pull this off. So apparently <laughs> it just isn't time-wise possible. Image shows both obverses. And you can clearly see the star in front. Yeah, um, I saw this coin. Yeah. This thing is crazy. Why of Liberty. So in in making a counterfeit 1796 large scent, somebody took a scent, a, a worn coin from the 1840s and struck their counterfeit over it so that it would have been made with a very similar composition. Um, but especially here on the back, you can see it very well. You can see the underlying one cent from the original strike uh, that wasn't completely ab obliterated by the counterfeit strike. This is why this kind of stuff it, it needs studied because it is just so scary. Let's see if this video will play for us here. Yeah, there you go. So he has a video that, that is made showing what he is seeing as far as the hairlines go in the coin. That's the counterfeit. And then it fades into the host coin. Yep. And then it fades into what the area that he's noticing is. Really, really interesting. Really, really uh, in-depth breakdown of what's going on there. Super cool. That stuff, yep. that is like coin nerd extraordinaire right there. We're nerding out on it. We are. We really are. Ash Dobbs. Was happy to add this piece to my Toller collection. So Salzburg was a state in the Holy Roman Empire ruled by an archbishop. This was made to commemorate the opening and dedication of the cathedral at, at Salzburg. Huh. 
Cool. And it's in an NGC AU58 holder. Yeah. Very, very cool. On one side, you have the, looks like the church there, whatever it's commemorating. Cathedral. The yeah. Holy Roman Empire. The cathedral. Okay. So that's, it's the th- cathedral at Salzburg. And then it looks like yeah. on the back, you have a priest carrying maybe an altar. Um, something That is the archbishop, if I'm not mistaken. Could be. Could very well be. Cool. Interesting. This is a dollar. Very cool. Uh, Dennis Mendoza says, love the pedigree. He posted an 1846 over $5010 gold piece and a PCGS AU55 holder uh, with a pedigree to Harry W. Bass Jr. and Blue Hill. Very, very cool. Very, yeah, very, that, very cool. That's a collection for you. Yeah. Pedigrees are fun. I'm- Brian Rhodes has an 1883 CC and MS 64 plus from PCGS. That's a fun coin. That is almost really oh, nice. Almost definitely a former GSA coin. Yeah, I'd pretty much guarantee that. Well, 86 percent of the uh, the mintage of 1884 dollars was in the GSA hoard. Uh, Michael, is that is that Caudle? Michael Caudle? Yeah. I believe so. Uh, 1986 Statue of Liberty Silver Proof. This one looks antiqued with background toning resembling the colors of Old Glory. It kind of does. That's cool. Kind of like an orange or red, a white, and kind of a blue or purple. Yeah, it's got some nice pastels on it. Very cool. Don Osler, hard to grade, but love the Enqs design of this series. One of my favorite designs ever. The uh, yeah. two and a half or five Indian. Let's see. This is a nice. two and a half. The sunken relief coin is is just absolutely stellar. Yep, it's one of my favorites. Yep, I think I'm, pretty much everybody loves that design. I'm yeah, I don't, I don't know anybody that doesn't actually. Yeah. Uh, and if Have they do, anybody look at it go nah. nah and and, and if they do, we can't be friends. So just saying. Uh, Josh Pelsky, nineteen oh five, two and a half dollar gold. So it looks like he has a uh, nineteen oh five, two and a half dollar uh, Liberty. Nice coin. Fun. Nice. Chris Mendez just got this 1796 bust bust dollar to add to my collection. Lots of detail still left. These coins are hard to get in decent shape. Do you think this coin would see a C? Ha, huh, it's hard to tell from a picture if a coin's going to go through yeah. CAC. Uh looks like a nice example. PCGS certified. Got the hardest part done. It's in a PCGS lab. Yep, you're halfway there. Living yeah. on a prayer. <laughs> But, um, I mean, these are these are some of the night. Yeah, I mean, let's see. How many stars is on this one? Uh, yeah. I mean, this that's the kind of stuff that I just love. Yeah. It's got everything. It's got the lettered edges, you know, screw press. I let's, you, Now you know why I like early American coinage, buddy. Uh, Jody Dotson said, picked up this 1869 Bafria two and a half shillings. Uh, it was minted the same year, but, uh, oh, it says I was minted the same year, but I am no longer in mint state. <laughs> uh, so he shows the coin here. It's got a, uh, I don't know if that's like a Jaguar maybe on the front, two and a half shillings in a, uh, NGC wow. MS 63 holder. And then he shows the back. It's got a palm tree with a rising sun. It looks like it's on a beach. It says peace, unity, and freedom underneath. Cool. Very cool. Well, it looks like a nice place to be, too. Yeah. Brian Bass, 1830, small O, Overton 118. So this is a capped bust half. Yep. It's an AU with a die clash visible. On uh, So you look at the reverse shield. Recently acquired well below value. Love these high-grade bust halves. And then it's Matt Dinger. Striker wear. Hashtag striker wear. I like that. We should use that. <laughs> Yeah, so he, he does provide actually a really cool picture of the die clash. So this is where the yeah. dies actually slap together uh, without a blank in there, and it left the lettering from the headband Liberty uh, visible backwards inside the shield. Uh, and the and, only way to clean that out is to take the, the stripes on the shield completely off. Pretty much, so yeah. That's no fixing it. Yep, they just left them and kept making coins. You see that on uh, quite a few different dates. Uh so, yeah, cool, cool coin. Uh, let's see, Warren Kennedy, nothing special, but it's gold, and I like gold. Yeah, me too. Uh, let's see, he shows us a, I'll take it. a 2008 Gold Eagle, an 
not quite sure which Denom it is because I can't see the back, but uh, I love gold. love gold, baby. Yeah. Joe Bohannon, 1888S Morgan in MS64. Nicely toned and at least the obverse in a proof-like. Yeah, it does look like. I was just going to mention, it does look semi-proof-like. Uh, the reverse, you can tell from the picture, got a little bit, but not a ton, not like the front. So that's probably why it didn't get a uh, PL designation. Well, those PL designations are are a superlative for a reason. Yeah. Not that common. J.R. Preston. Nothing spectacular, but my recent buys. Completed the Morgan and Peace Dollar Anniversary Editions, all in MS-70. Cool, cool, cool. I'm still Kirk fond of those. Hake. Kirk Hake. Not necessarily my coolest thing, but my newest thing anyway. This year's Mardi Gras de Bloon Hall. Still have a couple thousand more to sort through. So Kirk uh, lives down in New Orleans, and uh, I've known him for quite a while. Yeah. Um, Hercules. Hercules. And Hercules. And, uh, you know, him and Mardi Gras tokens, he introduced me to him. And it's like, they're actually, they're really cool. Yeah. There's lots of different crews and lots of different types. And I've seen them too. They go metal, way back. Some are not. And... They go way back. I've seen them from the the early sixties. Actually is when you see yeah. a lot of them from. And it's, it's all about the crew that created it. That's, yeah. that's what it's all about. It's about the people. Yep. Yep. Uh, David Hollister, Hawaiian PCGS doily. Ooh, I like that. It's a doily on a doily and a hell of a coin, too. Yep. Uh, so it's got a, a, a Hawaiian commemorative half dollar in MS-63 in the scarce doily holder. They only did these for a very short time, so the holders themselves actually bring a premium. Uh, it and has, a green dot. Yep. It has also been verified, uh, certified by CAC. So super nice coin. Yeah. Ooh. That kind of stuff I like. Ah, here's Taffy Coins, Kyle Dugan. Queen Elizabeth II Platinum Jubilee, five ounce silver proof. Not a monarchist myself, but quite like the design. So we have the well, queen on the horseback, 2022. Large coin, it looks like. And then Platinum Jubilee. So this is. I don't even know. I mean. No, uh, let's see. So 52 50 to 22. 60? 70 years. 70? Wow. That's yeah. a lot. That's a long time to rule. Yep. Uh, super cool. Uh, Joseph Horseman says, local coin show today, and he posts an 1803 drape bust. Dollar. Dollar. And that's what we're going to close her out on the night. Very nice looking coin. Love them. Love them. Love them. Love them. Yeah. No, that's, that's, look, when, when we ask you guys to bring your coolest things, you bring it. And you know what else? I love this segment. So, uh, thank you everyone that participated. You guys are awesome. I love looking at all your new stuff. Still the favorite thing we do, um, mm -hmm. right here. Yeah. So yeah, absolutely. You guys rock. Thank you for bringing your awesome stuff for us to see tonight. Mike, my friend, my partner, my compatriot 201 is in the books. Yeah, so uh, we'd like to thank our uh, our staff. Yes, you know uh, we have uh, the unnamed source Barry Swan, uh, Justin Irvin, Ernesto Aguilar, and Corey Scherer. Uh Those are the guys that help make this thing go every day. Uh, they make us better. They make us work harder, and uh, they actually really, really contribute more than you guys will ever yes. know. Yes, they do. So thank you to those guys. Thank you to everybody who listened. Without you, this eh, we'd do it anyway. But we would. But it wouldn't be as fun. That's right. Thanks, man. Thanks, buddy. Good to see you. Yeah, and uh, so for the Coin Show podcast, I'm Mike, and I am Matt, and we will talk to you next time on episode two hundred two of the Coin Show podcast. You've been listening to the Coin Show podcast with Matt Dinger and Mike Nottleman. The boys will be back soon with another informative and entertaining episode. Meanwhile, you can follow the show on social media at The Coin Show on Twitter and Instagram and on Facebook at Facebook.com slash The Coin Show. You can also join their private group. Just search Facebook groups for Friends of The Coin Show and request access. But if you want to take it to the next level and support The Coin Show podcast, you can go to www.patreon.com slash The Coin Show. If you subscribe at the $5 a month level or higher, 
you'll have access to Not The Coin Show podcast on the off weeks, as well as other surprises reserved for our patrons. Visit our website at coinshowradio.com or download our podcast on Apple Podcasts, iHeartRadio, Spotify, or wherever you download your podcasts. This has been The Coin Show Podcast.